your property is listed on the MLS and now you get an offer on your property that you do accept. What is the next step? It is to complete the contract. And today I'm going to go through the contract with you to show you what needs to be completed in order to get your property sold and into closing, get funds available, and close in the fastest amount of time. This is a standard one to four family residential contract. This contract is provided by the Texas Real Estate Commission. Uh, this contract is to be used only for uh, residential properties. It cannot be used for condominiums. For condominiums, there's going to be a separate contract that needs to be completed by both sellers and the buyer. Uh, this residential contract consists of eight pages. Paragraph one of this contract is going to be the parties involved. Uh, the first line is going to be for the seller and the second line is going to be the buyer's name. Paragraph two of the contract is going to be the property location, the lot block, the subdivision, the county, and also the physical address of the property. Uh, par paragraph 2D is called the exclusions and this basically means if there are any improvements or accessories that the seller would like to retain in which it must be removed prior to the delivery of possession of the property uh, it must be written in this section for example if there's a certain chandelier that you would like to keep the seller you would need to place that chandelier in this section paragraph 3 of page 1 of the sales contract uh, identifies the down payment the amount financed and the total price of the property in this case, uh, A equals the down payment, B equals the loan amount, and C equals the total price of the property. Paragraph 4 consists of financing. If the buyer is getting financing to purchase your property, they will need to either A, provide a third party financing document, uh, B, if they are assuming your loan, you will need to check B. If the seller is providing financing, you will need to check C. Paragraph 5 of the sales contract is the earnest money amount. Uh, the buyer will need to place how much money they're going to put in the earnest uh, to the title company. The name of the title company needs to go there, uh, the escrow agent and if there's going to be additional earnest money deposited it would also need to go in this section. Paragraph number six talks about the title policy and the survey. Uh, 6a uh, we talk about the title policy and this basically states that uh, it is negotiable on who pays for the title policy either the buyer or the seller whichever needs to go ahead and check that particular box and also uh, in the space below it would need to be the title policy company's name will go needs to go in that particular field we're still in paragraph number six this is going to be section C and number one uh, this says uh, that the seller if the seller fails to deliver the existing survey and residential real property affidavit within the time period required the buyer may obtain a new survey no later than three days before the closing date at the seller's expense. Uh, typically what goes is going to be between seven uh, to ten days uh, that the seller is required to provide a survey of the property. If the seller fails to provide the sur uh, survey of the property then you will need to go ahead and come down to the middle of the paragraph still in section C1 and go ahead and check the seller's box stating that the seller is going to pay for the survey of the property. We are still in paragraph number six. This is going to be section D. This paragraph requires the buyer to object no later than the earlier of the closing dated or the negotiated number of days after the buyer received the commitment, exemption documents, and the survey. Provided that the seller does not incur any expenses to the provision that it requires the seller to cure the, the timely objections of the buyer or any third party lender. Paragraph number six, section E, number two. This paragraph consists if the property is under uh, homeowners association, 
uh, mandatory membership. If it is, you just check uh, that the property is under mandatory membership. If it's not, you just check the second box. And we move on to paragraph number uh, seven. Paragraph number seven, uh, property condition. This paragraph allows the buyer to have an inspection performed on the property by a licensed tracked inspector. Uh, the, the seller disclosure notice should have already been received by the buyer prior to them making an offer. Uh, the buyer can back out of the contract up to seven days after receiving the notice or prior to the property closing, whichever occurs first. In paragraph number seven, section C, the notice of lead-based paint is also located here. If the property was built in uh, prior to 1978, the required addendum must be uh, attached to this contract. Paragraph number seven, section D, this is the acceptance of the property condition. And this basically states if the buyer accepts the property in its present condition, you will need to check number one. Uh, number two uh, states that the buyer will accept the property in its uh, present condition only if at seller's expense uh, does the you know repair work or treatments on the particular property uh, prior to closing. And then you will need to go ahead and check number box number two. Paragraph number seven, section eight. Uh, this is the residential service contract, which is basically a home warranty. And uh, if the buyer purchases the residential service contract, and the seller shall, you know, reimburse the buyer for the home warranty, typically up to four hundred and twenty-five dollars uh, for a one-year uh, home warranty on the property. Uh, if you are not wanting to pay for the home warranty, then of course in this section uh, you will just place a zero in that fill which is required. And now we're going to pa paragraph number nine is the closing date. In this section you will need to put uh, what date or you would like the property to be closed on on or before that particular date or seven days after the objections uh, have been made in paragraph number six uh, that the buyer has objected to. Paragraph number ten is going to be when possession of the property is going to be taken over by the buyer. Uh, if it's going to be upon closing, you will need to go ahead and check the first box. Or if you have came up with a different arrangements, you will need to go ahead and check the second box and also provide a temporary residential lease form promulgated by TREC or a written lease required by all parties. Paragraph number 12, this is going to be the settlement and other expenses. Section A, number 1B, uh, this area allows the seller to provide a concession to help the buyer with any kind of closing cost and you just put the amount that you are wanting to provide uh, to the buyer in this field right here. Paragraph number 16 is mediation. If there's a dispute uh, between the seller and the buyer related to the contract and it cannot be resolved, uh, you may go through mediation. Uh, if you decide to go through mediation, you will need to check the first box if you decide not to go to mediation, you will need to check the second box. Paragraph number 21, uh, this is the notices. Basically in this paragraph, we would need the buyer's uh, name, address, uh, phone number, fax number, and email. We would also need the seller's information the same. Seller's name, phone number, address, fax, and email. And this paragraph states uh, that it must be in writing for the contract to be in writing must be hand delivered, faxed, or emailed uh, to the prospect for it to take an effect. Paragraph number 22 is going to be the agreement of the parties. In this section, you will need to check which boxes uh, apply to you. Uh, for example, if the seller, I'm sorry, if the buyer is doing financing, then of course you will need to check uh, third party financing. Uh, if they're doing, you know, traditional, conventional, FHA or VA type of loan. If the seller is doing owner financing, then you will need to provide the addendum for that and then check that box and so on. If there's uh, one that you not see on here, then of course you will need to check the other uh, box and provide a list of what documents, documents that you are providing. Paragraph number 24. Uh, consists of consulting and attorney. 
Uh, this paragraph just states that real estate licensed agents are not, uh, cannot give legal advice to buyers or sellers. Uh, so therefore you must contact an attorney uh, to get legal advice on the contract or any kind of uh, questions that you do have. Uh, in this section you will need to put the buyer's attorney's name, contact information, we need to put that information right next to. Now if you have any other questions in regards to the document that we just went over or to any of our flat fee MLS options that we do provide, please give us a call toll free at 1-888-PLUGIN-8 or you may visit our website at www.pluginrealty.com.